Three months ago, Wayne LaPierre said that he and other NRA officials would answer questions on any television program. Since then, Wayne LaPierre and everyone at the NRA have refused our invitations to come on this program every night until now. The NRA has just announced new proposals, details of a plan they say will make schools safer. Good morning. I'm Asa Hutchinson, former Congressman Asa Hutchinson. The false and misleading statements made by William Jefferson Clinton were repeated by the witnesses to the grand jury. Spearheading the NRA's charge, our first recommendation is for model training programs. Training teachers and personnel to carry weapons. Designated armed school personnel. Which could include sidearms, shotguns, to AR-15s. The second recommendation, changing the laws. To allow for weapons to be carried on school properties. There's going to be some requirements for changes in state law. It is a different story in the state. I would be interested in what Connecticut is doing. Connecticut is leading by example, passing some of the strictest gun control measures. The bill includes a new registry for existing magazines. I would say it's totally inadequate. It expands the state's assault weapons ban. I would say it's totally inadequate. It calls for background checks for private gun sales. It's totally inadequate. Inadequate, totally inadequate, totally inadequate. They're against background checks. 90% of Americans believe that universal background checks are absolutely essential. There's no guarantee the NRA will accept these recommendations. The National Rifle Association is the natural, obvious choice to sponsor this program. I'm employed as a consultant. I'd like to introduce the head of the effort, Asa Hutchinson. He's involved in a same-sex political marriage with Wayne LaPierre. The NRA leaders show no signs of giving in. We need common sense, just common sense gun regulation, common sense reform. If we fail, it can only get worse. The National Rifle Association released its task force's report on how to reduce a modern American way of death. Gun massacres by America's uniquely well-equipped mass murderers who have used rapid-fire weapons with high-capacity ammunition magazines to gun down children and teachers at Sandy Hook Elementary School, men, women, and children at a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, and a congresswoman and her constituents in, a Tucson, in Tucson, Arizona. After three months of study, the NRA task force recommendation was exactly what the NRA said it would be three months ago. We should put armed security in every school. That was Wayne LaPierre three months ago, and here was the director of that task force on his first day on the job three months ago. Armed, trained, qualified school security personnel will be one element of that plan. That was former Congressman Asa Hutchinson, who also served as the head of the DEA and an undersecretary of the Homeland Security Department in the Bush administration. And, of course, first came to national attention as one of the House prosecutors in the impeachment trial of President Clinton. Joining me now is former Congressman Asa Hutchinson. Congressman, first of all, I have to thank you very much for coming on this program. We've been trying to get uh, anyone from the NRA on for the last three months. Uh, you're the first person to do this for us, and so I want to first just thank you for that. Uh, well, you're welcome, and I'm not uh, with the NRA, nor do I represent the NRA, or nor am I a spokesman uh, for the NRA. So I'm in here as the uh, uh, director of the task force that just looked at the school safety issues. And Lawrence, I'm delighted to be here, but that introductory piece really misrepresented uh, the background that led up to this task force and our findings. For example, uh, Philadelphia. Uh, uses magnetometers for every high school student to go through, but they do not use armed school resource officers. We're not trying to change that. That's their prerogative. We're delighted with the security measures that they have in place. We want to help them there. You go out to Los Angeles, they choose a different model with armed school resource officers, about 300 of those in their unified uh, school district. That's their prerogative there. And so our report makes uh, recommendations that are useful for whatever model the schools adopt. But yes, if you're going to use a school resource officer, have greater training. If you're going to use an armed school personnel, have 40 hours of training and make sure uh, they're trained properly. And then have many other tools far beyond simply an armed officer that will help these tools, particularly middle America. 
uh, that is facing the challenge of few resources, but they want to be able to protect the children. And our 252-page report uh, does provide some solutions for them. Congressman, uh, you've made much today of, of your independence from the NRA, and so I just want to go through some checklist items on that. Because on a task force report like this, as you know, when you were in Congress and in the administration, when a report comes in, you want to know what is the independent standing of this report, where the biases might be. When you were a congressman, what was your scorecard, of your voting scorecard with the National Rifle Association? You'd have to check the record. I hope it was good. I come Somewhere from close to 100 percent, do you think? I, like I said, I hope it is because <laughs> I come from Arkansas and, okay. and uh, that's uh, the uh, well, I mean, you know, and that would, that viewpoint would, of my constituents. That's kind of a beginning point on just how independent this task force is. And the second question I would have about that is, did you select the members of this task force? You personally select them? Uh, yes, I did. And why, if you selected them, did you not select a single person who has spent one day of his or her life in a classroom as an educator? Well, I'm not sure that's a, a true statement that you're saying. Uh, well, it is. I'm going to clarify it is. There are 13 members, including yourself. They all have law enforcement backgrounds and security backgrounds. There wasn't one person in there with any form of an education background or any experience as a teacher or a school administrator. And this task force was uh, charged with, and you accepted that charge, of school security exclusively. Well, for example, I have uh, met with uh, principals and superintendents and heard their uh, viewpoints and their concerns. They've greatly impacted the report that we're producing. Uh, Michael Dorn is a school safety expert out of, uh, out of Georgia that's nationally recognized. We have consulted with him. We've consulted with uh, uh, the uh, National Association of School Resource Officers and, you know, like I said, uh, administrators across the country. So we've brought in a broad uh, viewpoint, but it's also important that the former Secret Service, they're the ones that were called in to look at the Virginia Tech uh, after incident report, uh, the Homeland Security officials, law enforcement training. We wanted to look at better training models for those that work in sensitive environment, and I can't think of anybody better. And you're looking at, uh, they're recommending 40 to 60 hours of training for anyone who utilizes for a school resource officer, for enhanced training for them, for enhanced training uh, if you're going to have an armed school personnel, it would be very substantial training. And so that's the expertise that we brought in for this review. And I'm looking at the members now. Uh, RBT Solutions is a company that is rep There are 13 members of your task force. Uh, five of them work for that same company. Another company that is not listed on here, uh, six people are affiliated with Command Consulting Group. RBT Solutions is actually in the business, isn't it, of training school security officers. They would make money, a lot of money, if these recommendations that they voted for on your task force were actually carried out. Well, I doubt that. They, they're actually, they do work primarily for uh, overseas military, is my understanding. So is it your understanding that there are no, there's no one involved in this task force who's involved with any company that would in any way profit from the recommendation made by this report if it was carried out nationally? I don't think so, because nationally, if this is carried out, schools are going to make decisions as to who in their... Uh, school, uh, are they going to expand school resource officers? Those are relationships with the local sheriff's office, the local police department. But their training it's, it's is, their the training, training, their training, you interrupted me. Go ahead. Their training is provided by local law enforcement, their law enforcement training center, for example, for the state. Now, if you go to the armed school person, now, yes, I hope they do utilize uh, the private sector is not just a state function, but there generally will be state by state uh, that would have provide this training. And how much were you and the task force members paid for this work? Well, the, we're not going to provide you with a line by line uh, why, budget. Why wouldn't you do that, Congressman? 
Because it's none of your business, primarily. Well, if, you, if you're submitting a report to be evaluated as an independent report, and you're being paid by the people who you are giving the report to, the credibility of the report rests on a lot of things, including that payment relationship. So I would like to ask you, how much did the National Rifle Association pay you individually to do this, and are they still paying you? Lawrence, let me tell you that I have compiled this uh, group of experts together to prepare this report. Have you read the 252-page report? Yes, I have. It is right here on my desk. If there's any page you want to refer to, I'm happy to go straight to it. Uh, let's, let's go to the uh, best practices. Go ahead. And if you look at the best practices, if you look at the interior lock section and where it talks about the importance of the right kind of locks to protect the teachers in the school. Uh, if you look at the uh, perimeter fencing, it has uh, the examples there of the best practices across the country. This has nothing to do with firearms. This has nothing to do uh, with school resource officers. This has something to do with the assessments that the schools do uh, to develop the right security plans. It, have you looked at the section which recommends that school safety become a part of the adequacy standards for school education by the states? This is not money. This is local control. This is saying that safety is important to the children. I've been very frustrated that we present a comprehensive report that will do something good for the safety of our children across this country Mark Mattioli, who came down as a Sandy Hook parent and said, I want to express my thanks that someone is doing something about safety. I wish that the debate would move in that direction because that's exactly what will save children's lives. Congressman, I'd like to talk to you about two children in particular, uh, six-year-old Veronica Mosier Sullivan, nine-year-old Christina Taylor Green, and your report. Your report is concerned exclusively with keeping children safe in schools. That's what the NRA charged you to do. That was the limit of it. And so you and the NRA are concerned with keeping children safe in school, but when they leave the school, it is the NRA position that those children are on their own. If one of those children goes to a movie theater, say in Aurora, Colorado, as Veronica Mosier Sullivan did when she was six years old. She can be shot to death, and the NRA will make no comment about that and make no recommendations about what to do about that. And Christina Taylor Green, at nine years old, after going to school, can go watch her congresswoman, Gabby Giffords, in a shopping mall parking lot. And you and the NRA have absolutely no recommendation how to keep that nine-year-old girl safe in America if she's in a shopping mall parking lot. Why aren't you and the NRA doing a task force on movie theater safety and shopping mall safety? Every instance that you referred to is an incredible tragedy. Uh, I've been a federal prosecutor. I've dealt with crime. I've had to deal with victims. Uh, those are all individual tragedies. How do you respond as a society to those uh, individual uh, tragedies that we see? You respond by law enforcement. You respond by security. You respond by addressing the problems of society. I tackle one thing at a time in life. I've tackling school safety, and we believe we've made some very good recommendations. I wasn't asked to look at the safety of movie theaters. I was not asked to look at the uh, safety of, of uh, uh, members of Congress. I was looked to, asked to look at the safety of schools. We have done that. We have performed that. We've made some very substantial recommendations that I hope will be considered by the federal Congress, by our states, and I hope the NRA. They haven't made a decision to accept these recommendations or not. One of them is a mental health component uh, for our schools that we need to do better in uh, so that whenever we have an incidence of bullying that, uh, or other antisocial behavior that it's dealt with promptly in the schools. These are part of our recommendations that I hope will be accepted by the NRA, uh, but also will be uh, looked at by individual schools as better practices. Congressman Hutchinson, you, you said uh, you made a reference there to tackling this problem. I want you to listen to someone who literally tackled this problem. I want you to listen to Patricia Mache, who was one of the people 
who tackled the shooter, the man who tried to kill Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Let's listen to her. I immediately got to my knees and they were shouting, grab the gun, grab the gun. And I couldn't reach the gun because it was in his right hand and that was the distant one from me. Um, as they were doing that, he pulled out a magazine from his left pocket and had it in his hand, but he dropped it on the sidewalk and I was able to recover it before he could get it. Um, by then the gun had been secured and um, I noticed he was flailing his legs and I was afraid that he might be able to get free so I knelt on his legs, on his ankles. Um, I did that for a couple of seconds. Congressman, that uh, gunman was stopped because he had to reload. He was using a magazine that carried 33 bullets. He obtained that legally. He showed no interest in obtaining any weapons illegally. If we had still been living under the law that Dianne Feinstein helped push through this uh, in, into law in this country and that you opposed, he would not have had access to a 33 uh, uh, bullet magazine. He would have been able to shoot only 10 bullets. And so I have said publicly before that I will blame the shooter for those first nine or 10 bullets, but I blame the government and I blame the people in the government who allowed him to have those extra bullets to shoot all the rest of those people and kill Christina Taylor Greene and the other people there. Isn't it reasonable as you sit here tonight to think that we should not be equipping our mass murderers with the highest capacity magazines we can possibly equip them with? Well, we need to certainly keep uh, weapons out of the hands of those that are prohibited by law from having those weapons. And that is uh, those who are convicted criminals, uh, those who have been adjudicated. But, Congressman, uh, let me just ask you not, when they get we, You the, and I both agree that they will get those weapons. When they get them, what kind do you want them to have? Let me finish what I was saying. Do you want them if to have lower ahead. capacity weapons when crazy people and criminals get their hands on them? I want to have laws that are in force. I want to have background checks that are meaningful, and that means you have to put information into a system, and 32 states right now are not even putting information into the system to make sure we have adequate background checks. So let's improve that system. Uh, you're wanting to uh, reduce the, uh, have the gun control laws, whether it is uh, magazine capacities or whether it is uh, the type of weapon that somebody has, uh, that is a debate you can have. My debate, uh, although I don't agree with that as a solution because I don't think that's going to save children's lives. I think what we are proposing will help address, help schools to address from a local standpoint, improve security in their schools. And regardless of all the protections, all the laws that you pass in Congress, uh, you're always going to have someone that will get a gun illegally, that will go into a school, and what is going to be the response there? Are you going to let a teacher put her life on the line without any officer in the school that can come as a response person? I don't think that's the right course. I think teachers should teach and others should protect, and that's an option that our schools should have. And I don't think it needs to be demagogued uh, by saying uh, that's a, uh, you know, President Clinton uh, proposed and put in armed guards in schools. Is that an irrational concept that President Clinton proposed well, that has been adopted by many of the schools as a good safety measure? You can debate the other items. This is an important part, an important feature for school safety in our generation. Congressman, I'm not arguing with you over your proposal. What I will argue with you about is the efficacy of it and what we might expect for it. For example, as we know, there was an armed guard at Columbine and that didn't stop anything. And as you know, most bullets fired by police officers in America who have much more training than the school officers you're talking about. Most of the bullets American police officers fire miss the target they are aiming at. And as you know, the NYPD has much more rigorous firearms training than anything you're proposing for these school officers. And the hopes that you're suggesting for these school op officers are very unrealistic, especially when you consider that incident we had 
had here in Manhattan in front of the Empire State Building where two officers fired 16 bullets. They had to kill a gunman there who was uh, b uh, then they wounded nine bystanders trained New York City police officer bullets wounded nine bystanders. And so when you say let's have these minimally trained uh, gun officers in schools, you have to recognize that what you're suggesting is something that has a very limited capacity for success, as do many of the other proposals that come from my side of this debate. We understand that there are limited capacities to the proposals we are making, that none of them are perfect. And what bothers me, Congressman, is that you make it sound like these good guys with the gun can solve every problem we have with mass murderers. One point you made, you said minimal training. If you read our report, you will see that we're enhancing training. But, Congressman, that's in, nothing no, 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 compared no, to an no, NYPD no, officer, but, and you know it. It's Lawrence, a joke it, compared to what police officers get. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I thought I was supposed to be able to answer Go, questions that you would ask. I, I really misunderstand the Go purpose ahead, of these interviews. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you made the comment that there was minimal training that's recommended in our report, but yet our report enhances training to 40 to 60 hours for school resource officers. You have to remember that they already have gone through uh, what a, a New York police officer goes through. They go through the law enforcement training. They're sworn officers, and then they're assigned to the school with specialized training. We want to enhance that even to a greater extent because it is in a sensitive environment, and no one that that uh, carries a firearm in that sensitive environment should have a minimal amount of training. And they should coordinate that with the law enforcement. But whenever you look at whether it is Sandy Hook or whether you look at any other incidents, it is a law enforcement officer arriving with a firearm which dismantles the circumstance and causes the shooter either to kill himself or to put down his gun or be killed. But it takes that officer who arrives. We want to reduce that response time so they're there quicker and they delay, uh, reducing the response time will save lives. Congressman, I just have one more question and I thank you for, for staying with us this long. And that is something that Wayne LaPierre said. This is the man you're working for at the NRA uh, on this contract to, to deliver him a report that he asked for. Before our last presidential election, he sent out a fundraising letter uh, filled with uh, ways to, uh, I guess, put fear into the hearts of NRA members. And one of the things he said, I am going to quote to you now, he said, if President Obama is reelected, this is a quote, the night of November 6th, 2012, you and I will lose more on the election battlefield than our nation has lost in any battle, any time, anywhere. Uh, now, Congressman, that, of course, is spoken by, uh, by someone who evaded military service himself. Have you ever heard a more despicable thing dishonoring our war dead than you have heard from Wayne LaPierre? Have you heard anything more despicable than that from anyone who has ever hired you or anyone you have voluntarily associated with? Let me just say this about uh, the NRA. It is a very serious initiative that they have engaged in for school safety. As Mark Mattioli today applauded the NRA for doing something to protect our children. What do you think about Wayne children. LaPierre said about this country's war dead? He said all of the war dead in the history of this country have, would not be that are, the suffering that we would have with President Obama reelected, which is the world we're living in right now. In other words, the suffering that he said you would be going through right now is worse than what American war dead have gone through. How does it feel to work for a man like that and take his money? Quite frankly, Lawrence, I don't trust your recitation uh, of his statements. And so I'll just have to read that for myself, and I'll come on after I read it myself. Th Congressman, this audience that you're talking to knows exactly where that came from, because that's been on this program well, before. That's the guy you're working for. Uh, 
my task with school safety. We've looked at it. Uh, it's a serious commitment of the NRA. I applaud them for that. I hope they adopt the recommendations that we have made. Uh, and, and I hope that it does something long term for school safety. And I think that that should be applauded. And I don't think you need to uh, demonize someone who wants to uh, uh, support that effort. I think, Congressman, I think Wayne LaPierre demonized himself when he said that if Barack Obama wins, that this country will lose more on the election battlefield than our nation has lost in any battle, any time, anywhere. Those are the words of the man you're working for. Congressman Asa Hutchinson, I, we're out of time. I thank you very, very much for doing this tonight. Uh, I obviously have a lot to talk about on this, and you're the only person uh, involved with that organization who's come here, and I really appreciate you doing that and giving us this time. Thank you, Congressman. Okay, that'll be it.